young, I used to like to stay outside all the time. When we were growing up, we weren't like most people today. When we were growing up, watching TV was the last thing on the list. What we really like to do is to ride bicycles, to go skating, take super long walks, even go up to Washington Park, way in the back where there were all these big giant hills where the kids used to build forts and where there, there were these big giant ponds. It was a wetland where you could go and you could look at tadpoles and frogs and all types of animals there and minnows. There was a nearby creek where we used to sneak and swim in sometimes because our parents never allowed us to go in those creeks. Life was fun. It was easy and it was good. And late at night, I would sneak outside when I could and I would stay out till one or two in the morning. I wasn't alone at the time. There were some people there these very young couples who were working but during the weekends I guess they stayed up very late at night and we would sit on this porch and they would take a big barrel metal barrel and they'd fill it with wood and then they'd burn leaves and things like that in it to create smoke to keep the mosquitoes away and we just sit there and talk Sometimes as a community, we'd sing songs. Some people would dance. Some people would tell stories. And I just couldn't miss that. That was what life was about to me. And sometimes while we were out there just sitting, I would just look up at all the beautiful stars in the sky and wonder just who and what I was and why I was here. At that time, I think my heart was fully open to the beauty in the world. As time passed, I began to let go of all of those things. Of course, I had to become a citizen, working and living in a society that didn't have time for those things. I had to become somebody who achieved instead of someone who enjoyed life and who dreamed great dreams and had many hopes and who had a community where we supported each other, where we cared for each other, where we were allowed to be just who and what we were with no fear. And as time went by, and I detached from those things, I could feel my heart just shrinking smaller and smaller, making it so that I never needed those things anymore. It was like the song that says, I am a rock, I am an island. A rock feels no pain, and an island never cries. And the reason I'm talking about this today is because, you see, I am not that unique. The only thing about me is that I'm not judging whether I did right or wrong during these time periods, so I am able to see clearly what happened. And by seeing what really happened, by contrasting myself then to now, it's easy to come to the conclusion that something is wrong in a culture that takes one away from fully living, fully being part of life, to an island or a rock, someone who has to hide their feelings and only express their feelings when they're with close friends and loved ones even people who have to sometimes explode either in tears or in anger and cursing because they have not been allowed to express themselves for so long that it is built up to a point of explosion. All of this happens 
because we don't allow ourselves to process what's going on. Our hearts have become hard and it's time to turn that back. It's time for us to begin to feel, to begin to love, to know hope, to know joy, to know sorrow, to know pain, to know all of these things and experience all of these things, realizing that the I that we talk about is actually created by and maintained by all of these thoughts and all of these experiences. Only when we feel every thought and experience are we able to move behind beyond the narrow mindset that we have been given by this society to be who and what we really are. For the small self that people talk about us needing to kill and get rid of is simply a part of the larger self that people want to embrace and endure. There's no difference. There is a difference in quantity, yes, but not in substance. We are that which we are seeking. And the only way that we can become our complete selves is to understand this. So let's stop staying in the violent and fighting mood all of the time, trying to kill parts of ourselves, trying to kill our ego and destroy it. That's a good message that may have been very valuable a long time ago, but the world has changed a whole lot. The ego has changed a whole lot. The nature of the world has changed a whole lot. So that now when we talk about destroying or killing the ego, it makes our heart even harder when we talk about destroying and killing things now. Because we talk about that too much in our society. We are not killing anything. What we are doing is we are expanding. We don't shrink our heart and kill our emotion. We should be expanding them as we expand the ego like a drop of ink into the ocean. You don't kill the ink. The ink expands throughout the whole ocean. You can't see it anymore or touch it anymore, but it is always there and always part of the greater. The same is true of this thing that we call the small self and the feelings and the thoughts that we have as we live in this world. If we allow ourselves to feel fully and completely what we think of as pain and fear will dissipate like the spreading of the ink into the ocean. It will be there, but not in a concentrated form. And when we need to draw on those feelings and those thoughts and those strengths and emotions in order to survive and be strong, we can do so without being overwhelmed by them or damaging ourselves by cutting off part of ourself in order to save the rest.